Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to your third Python 3 tutorial. And in this video, we're gonna talk about our first data type, numbers. Okay then, so I'm in Commander at the minute. You can use whichever command line tool you want. Hopefully it's Commander if you're on Windows. And I'm gonna enter the Python shell by saying Python, then enter. So now we can start typing Python code. But before we do that, I wanna explain one thing. Everything in Python is considered an object and objects have attributes and functions. So let's just step away from coding altogether and think about this. Imagine a real life object, a car for example. It has attributes, the size, the color, the speed. These things all describe the car, they're the car's attributes. It also has functions. It can drive, brake, accelerate, reverse, etc. So these are the functions of the car. So every object has attributes and functions. It's the same in Python. Everything in Python is an object and every object has attributes and functions. And when we talk about these functions in respect to these objects, we call them methods. So every object has attributes and methods which are just functions of that object. So we're gonna look at different types of objects in this series, lists, numbers, dictionary strings, all that kind of good stuff. And they're all gonna have different attributes and methods associated with them. So we'll look at a few examples of each in each case, okay? So we're gonna look at numbers in this tutorial. And in Python, there's two types of numbers, integers and floats. So integers are whole numbers, things like one, three, five, seven, nine, etc. And floating point numbers or floats are any number with a decimal point in them. So 3.142 or 1.5. So in Python, how can we find out the type of an object? Well, we can use a built-in method, which is a function, remember, called type. So we just say type, which is the function name. Then to invoke, to start that function or method, we use the parenthesis, all right? Now, inside this parenthesis, we can pass an argument. And an argument is just something we pass into a method. So the argument we're going to pass in is going to be an object. And in this case, it's going to be a five. Remember, everything in Python is an object. And it's going to tell us the type of this object. And we can see it's an integer. It says class int. OK, likewise, we can say type and then pass in a decimal here, 3.142. That is a float. All right. So we've got these two different types of numbers that we can play with. So what can we do with these numbers? Well, we can do some basic math. We could say five plus five. That's ten. Five minus five. 5, uh, 0 rather, uh, 5 times 5, that's 25, and then 5 divided by 5, that's 1. But notice this, we've got 1.0. It's returning a float, not a whole number, not an integer. Why is it doing that? Well, this is just one of the quirks of Python 3. This is what it does. It returns us an integer when we perform any kind of division. So for the other operators, plus, subtract, multiply, if we're using integers to begin with, we're always going to get back an integer. But when we use division, we're always going to get back a float. That's just the way of Python 3. So just watch out for that. If you want to return an integer when you do division, you can do the integer version of this, which is 5, then double forward slash 5 which is going to return one as an integer. OK, so this right here, this double forward slash is how we perform an integer division. All right, then. So what else can we do with numbers? Well, we can use the power of we can say five to the power of five. So that's just double asterisk and that returns three, one, two, five. Cool. We can also work out the modulus and the modulus is kind of like the remainder of a division. So if I say what is 10 divided by 3 in like primary school or something like that, before we started doing decimals, we'd say, well, that's 3 remainder 1, right? The modulus is the remainder. So how do we work out the modulus? We can say 10 percent, which is the operator for modulus, then 3, what we're dividing by. This is going to give us the modulus, the remainder, which is 1. All right, cool. So I just want to talk about one more thing we can do with these different operators, and that is the order of operation. So say, for example, we've got this equation 5 plus 5 and then times it by 3. What is that going to equal? Well, it's going to equal to 20. And that's because, first of all, we do this operation 5 times 3 and then we do this operation plus 5. So that's 15 plus 5, which is 20. So why do we do it in this order? Well, it's because this operator has a higher stacking order, if you like, than the addition. So what's the stacking order? Well, you might have heard of something like this, bid mass in school. So this governs the order. So first we do anything in brackets, which is the B, 
i is indices which is anything to the power of so that comes next then division then multiplication then addition then subtraction okay so in this equation we don't have any of the first three but we have this one multiplication so we do that first then we do the addition all right so if we wanted to do the addition first in this case we just have to pop it in brackets because bid mass b is first b is for brackets five plus five times by three okay i understand this is probably basic math but i wanted to throw it out there just in case it was confusing you in any way shape or form cool so we can also store these numbers in variables so i could say something like this age is equal to i don't know 25 and now this variable age is going to store the value of 25 so if i call it at any point we're going to get returned 25. we can add to age we could say age plus five and we get 30 but this does not alter the value of age it just outputs the value of that equation so if i type age again it's still 25. so how do we update the value of age well we have to reassign it we have to say age equals something and it's going to equal age plus five so currently age is 25 so we're taking 25 plus 5 which is 30 then we're assigning that to age again so now if i call age it's going to be 30. now there's a shorter way of doing this a shorthand method and that is by saying age plus equals something or other so i could say age plus equals five that is going to take age add five to it and reassign it to age okay so now age should be 35 cool we can do the same with other uh, other operators as well so age minus equals five that's going to take five back off it so it should be 30. we can also say age divide equals i don't know two so it's going to divide age by two and reassign it to age which should be 15. so let's check it yeah and remember division gives us a floating point number which is why we have 0 0.0 at the end cool so these are all the kind of different things we can do with numbers so i want to do just a simple example where we're storing a few in a, a few variables and do a simple formula nothing taxing just so we get used to working with variables and numbers so let's work out how much i can save per month i'll say my wages are equal to whatever one thousand you know pounds or dollars and then we'll say bills equal 200 a month rent is equal to 500 a month and we'll say food is equal to 200 a month right so i've got wages which are my incomings my income and then these three things which are my outgoings so i want to work out how much per month i can save so we have access to all of these different variables now and they've all got a different number stored in them so i can kind of formulate some kind of formula from them so i can say savings is equal to so this is a new variable i'm creating and it's equal to wages minus bills minus rent minus food cool so now if i type savings we should get 100 so now we've created a formula out of these different variables and we've got 100 back so we can do these kind of things but with more complex examples which we're going to see throughout the remainder of this course so there we go there's your introduction to numbers in the next tutorial we're going to take a look at strings